2020 was for Leica the year of monochrome cameras and they basically brought to market two, I think, very important milestones in the Leica camera history. The first one is the Leica M10 monochrome, which came earlier this year. It's a classical rangefinder camera with all the properties and features people love so much about rangefinders. The second one just came a few weeks ago. It's the Leica Q2 monochrome. Fantastic camera. First videos on this camera can already be found on my channel. And a question many people asked in comments below my videos was, is it the same if I shoot natively with a monochrome sensor in black and white and then compare it with, for instance, raw files from a Leica Q2 with color sensor, which have been converted into black and white. So one is the software based black and white photography and the other one is the native black and white photography with a monochrome sensor. And in this video, I'm going to explore this in detail. I hope you enjoy that little journey. Let's kick off the video. In order to compare native monochrome sensor shooting in black and white with color sensor shooting and then converting into black and white, I put the Leica Q2 monochrome and the Leica Q2 color side by side with a little scene where I could play around and test. And I went for the base ISO of both cameras, which is an ISO of 100. And uh, I mentioned in another video that in automatic mode for ISO, the Q2 monochrome always goes for 200, but the base ISO is 100. And I also went for a higher ISO value of 25,000 because both cameras are very well capable to shoot with high ISO values and wanted to compare the results also with the much higher sensitivity. So we have now here three pairs of images. Each pair consists of a native image from the Leica Q2 monochrome and the other image is a color image from the Leica Q2, which we are going to convert in black and white and then we are going to compare them. All six images are raw files as they came out of the camera and I have not done any post-processing at this point in time because I want to make the comparison as realistic as possible. So let's start with pair number one and we are going to convert now the color image from the Leica Q2 into black and white. So let's select it here. Let's get it into develop section. And uh, you see here the image, so we have an ISO of 100, which is the base ISO I mentioned before, aperture of f8.0, 1 over 4 seconds. And uh, on the right hand side, you see no manipulation of sliders in post-processing so far. This is all native as it came out of the camera. Let's push the black and white conversion button here in Lightroom. And then we have a black and white picture. Now we come to the comparison of this pair of images, left hand side Q2 monochrome, right hand side Q2 color after black and white conversion, both shooting parameters, base ISO 100, f8.0, one over four seconds. And uh, in Lightroom, we now choose here a magnification of 400% to go deeply into the image. And uh, we are going to see what we find here in a moment. So I start with that candle here, Gryffindor Hogwarts candle, and uh, let's unlock the scene for a moment so I can put them side by side. And then let's see if we see any differences. So I think that's it. If we look at that at first sight, I would say there is no difference. If you look a little longer and closer to the two images, you might want to get the impression that the Leica Q2 Mono is a tiny bit more sharp, a tiny bit more detailed. But uh, I think any difference you see here, at least on this candle, very likely can be compensated by some post-processing. So because we have not applied here any sharpening or you know any clarity slider for the time being, I think that is something you can very likely compensate for. So let's go back into the full view here and uh, let's look into other areas of that image. Let's take something dark here, a dark area. I think here you see, if you look at these images on the left hand side, it's a bit more smooth on the right hand side. You see some, I don't know what that is. It's not really noise, but it looks different to what we have on the left hand side. I think the left hand side looks right. The right hand side where the Q2 color is looks almost right. Let's look into that wooden box here. Pretty much the same. I don't think there are any big differences here. Let's look at that bottle and the label. 
Yeah, so here I think also here you see the left hand side is a bit more clean and crisp. The right hand side in these labels here, for instance, at 2019, but also at that cross here is a little, a little bit better on the left hand side on the Q2 monochrome, but not really noticeable. And don't forget, we are going here to 400% magnification, which is not the usual procedure. Usually you would print these pictures at 100% and then I think they are probably indistinguishable here. Game of Thrones looks good. I think they are basically the same. Let's look at some structure here on the wood. Yeah, that is interesting here. If you look at that, if you look at these screws here, I think the screws on the left hand side again look a tiny little bit better. Very likely you can compensate for that in post processing. So I would like to conclude on base ISO, the Leica Q2 monochrome and the Leica Q2 are very close to each other. If you want to see the difference, you will find it, but very likely you can compensate for it in post. And at base ISO, black and white conversion is almost as good as what you get on a black and white sensor. In addition, what I found interesting when looking at this pair of images is that the right hand side, which is the black and white converted Q2 color image, looks a tiny little bit brighter, although the shooting conditions and parameters I've chosen here are exactly the same on both cameras. Back in the library view, let's take the underexposed Leica Q2 color image. Let's go into the develop section. And uh, let's first of all, and that's the only slider I'm going to touch here in Lightroom post, let's take the exposure up by three stops. So we get a correct exposure. That's done. You see all the rest is not touched here. Then let's convert this into black and white. And then let's go back into the library. So now we have them here. Let's do exactly the same with the Q2 mono image. Let's pick it. Let's bring it into the develop section. Let's increase the exposure slider by three full stops and let's go back into the library and let's take the Q2 mono image and the Q2 color image and let's put them side by side. So now we have them here again, left hand side. Again, I try to keep this consistent to not confuse you. Q2 monochrome, right hand side Q2 color. And this time, that's why it was heavily underexposed. We have the same aperture f 8.0 we have the base ISO of 100 on both images, but the shutter speed was chosen to be one over 30 seconds instead of one over four seconds, which was the correct exposure. So we increased the exposure by the exposure slider and Lightroom in post by three full stops on both images. And on the right hand side, we did the black and white conversion. Let's look into some places here by 400% magnification. And let's start with the dark area here. That needs a moment to load, in particular on the right hand side. And now you see something interesting. Here noise kicked in and that's something I expected of course, because the monochrome sensors from Leica in the M10 mono, but also in the Q2 mono and also in the former M series mono cameras, they have fantastic noise behavior. And if you go here deeply into the image, you actually see on the right hand side how some structure, which is noise basically, and grain kicked in what you don't have on the left hand side on the native monochrome sensor. Going into that bottle again here, let's see what we get. We have the same phenomenon. I think both images are good. They can clearly be used. So I'm not criticizing in any case black and white conversion of Leica Q2 images here, but it's a noticeable difference you have here. Also here on the structure of the wall, you see that noise and grain kicking in, which you don't have on the native monochrome sensor. And again, on that label here, I think it's a bit more crisp on the monochrome side. And uh, remember, we are still at base ISO here. We just underexposed. And uh, so you see a difference here. Let's look at the Gryffindor candle again. Also here, both images are crisp, clear, sharp, but the right hand side has this structural noise and grain on top of it, I think I made my point. Let's go to one more place here. Let's have a look at that screw again. And on the screw, you see again, the left hand side with the native monochrome sensor is a bit more sharp, has no noise and grain. On the right hand side, you see some grain kicking in and some structural noise here. That's what you don't get if you take the image with a native monochrome sensor. Again, I wanna make that remark I made before 
despite the fact that both images have exactly the same shooting parameters and that the uplift on the exposure slider was exactly three stops on both images, the left hand side and the right hand side if we compare them, the Leica Q2 color is a tiny little bit more bright. And the conclusion from that second pair is also clear. If you are in one of these shooting situations, which is very common, where you have some very bright parts of the scene, and in order to capture them correctly and not have highlight clipping, you underexpose the whole scene. You can recover the image nicely out of the shadows, but on the Leica Q2 color sensor with black and white conversion, this comes at the expense of noise and grain, whereas on the Leica Q2 monochrome, the image still looks perfect. And we conclude the exercise now on base ISO and go to a super high ISO value of 25,000. And uh, that will be the last pair we are going to compare. And uh, here we'll make also our observations and then conclude the video. Back in the library, let's grab now again the Q2 color image. Let's bring it into the develop section and let's uh, have a look again. No sliders manipulated, no post processing so far. The only thing we are going to do is we convert it into black and white, but maybe let's have a look at the image before. And if we look into the image at large magnification of 400%, it's super noisy and super grainy. So I think in general, I said this many times, you can shoot with color cameras at a high ISO level, and you can also use them if you look at them from a distance. But in general, you will still have at a value of 25,000, a lot of noise, of course, which you clearly see here in the image. Nevertheless, the structure and the details they look not too bad, look at that candle here, but uh, clearly it's a very noisy, grainy picture. So let's do that black and white conversion. Let's go back into the library. Let's grab the Q2 mono image and the Q2 color image. Let's put them side by side. Again, left hand side Q2 mono, right hand side Q2 color. Let's have a look at these images here. Let's start with a little candle here first. And well, this is obvious, the right hand side on the Q2 color is still loading the full preview. But here I think that speaks for itself and that continues throughout the image, no matter where I go deeply into the image, you will see still a very usable, very good image on the Q2 monochrome with the native monochrome sensor. And you will see, I would say an interesting and maybe usable picture on the right hand side on the Q2 color, but it comes at the expense of a lot of noise and grain which is what was to be expected, of course, if you look into that. And the noise and the grain also kill some of the structure and the details, which is not what you have on the Leica Q2 monochrome here. Just looking into that, I still think that for an insane high ISO value of 25,000, the Q2 color actually delivers an interesting and I think a good result, but the Q2 mono is unbeatable when it comes to high ISO values. Now. Why did I go for an ISO of 25,000? Because most people will argue and say, that's not the ISO value I typically go for. I shoot somewhere between base ISO and maybe an ISO of 1600. Well, I went for the ISO of 25,000 because that's an extreme value. And now what you see here on the um, right hand side, the Q2 color black and white converted image in terms of noise, that can be interpolated between the base ISO and 25,000. So with increasing level of ISO, with increasing sensitivity, that noise and grain on the right hand side will become worse and worse and worse. Whereas in the same way on the Q2 mono on the left hand side, that little bit of noise you see will get better and better and better if you lower your ISO value. And I just wanted to demonstrate this at the two extremes, base ISO and 25,000 and everything you want to really use in real life in between can be interpolated in terms of these results. And the conclusion is clear. The Q2 mono sensor is much more superior when it comes to higher ISO values in shooting situations like the one we are showing here. All three conclusions when I looked into these three pairs of images already have been mentioned. First of all, at base ISO, black and white conversion is almost the same from images on the Leica Q2 with the color sensor as you would have taken them with the native black and white sensor and the Leica Q2 monochrome. But there are tiny little differences if you go deeply into the image. I think you can see that the Q2 monochrome is a tiny little bit superior to what you have on the Q2 color after black and white conversion. Second, 
if you are in these typical shooting conditions where you have to underexpose your scene and later get the lights and you know the information back out of the dark areas and the shadows clearly the q2 monochrome was superior the q2 color after black and white conversion but also before lost details and brought in noise and grain and then the higher your iso value will be chosen the more you will get noise and grain in the Leica Q2 images. That's normal for sensors in general, in particular for color sensors. On the Q2 monochrome, you could shoot at 25,000 ISO with still very good outcome and result, which is fully in line with other samples I posted on my channel, where you can see that monochrome sensors in general are not really vulnerable to noise in the same way as you see this on color sensors. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and peace out.